Hey guys, welcome back to Navainu. In the last video, we were talking about X chromosome inactivation. We had seen the overall process of lionization, bar body formation. We talked about uh, dosage compensation, and we saw the effect of X inactivation on the phenotype in calico cats. Now, in this video, we are going to focus on this inactivation part. What exactly happens? How the gene expression on X chromosome is shut off? The mechanism we are going to see. So, let's begin today's video. So if you remember we saw that inactivation of X chromosome occurs during the embryonic development at the blastocyst stage. Now what happens uh, during this? Each cell of the embryo and when I say cell I'm, I have shown here the nucleus okay this is the nucleus. In each cell of the embryo one of the X chromosome out of two X chromosomes would undergo inactivation. And this process is random, right? 50-50% chance is that either it can be paternal chromosome or maternal chromosome. Randomly, any one chromosome would undergo inactivation. Say for example, if here, uh, this chromosome might undergo inactivation. In this cell, this chromosome is undergoing inactivation. There is, you know, 50-50 chance that any one X chromosome undergo inactivation. Now, the interesting thing is, once this inactivation occurs, you know, this pattern is fixed. Once it is inactive, it is going to remain inactive throughout the adult life. Not only that, whatever daughter cells will be produced from this would also follow the same inactivation pattern. And what do I mean by that? That means, say for example, in this cell, maternal chromosome has undergone inactivation. So whatever daughter cells will be produced after the cell division, once the cell divides, whatever the daughter cells are produced will also have the inactivated maternal X chromosome. All right. Uh, similarly, in this case, say for example, it was the paternal X chromosome that had undergone inactivation. All the daughter cells that are produced would also have paternal X chromosome inactivated. So this is once it is done, it is done. It is going to stay and follow the same inactivation pattern. Interesting. Little bit about bar body we will speak towards the end. Right now let us focus when we say inactivation. What exactly is happening at this particular stage? Alright, I find this mechanism really very interesting. What happens is we know that we are going to have two X chromosome in normal female, right? Two active X chromosomes. Suppose this is the stage where both the X chromosomes are yet active. Now there is a region in X chromosome called XIC that is X inactivation center. This is very very important for the X chromosome inactivation as the name suggests. XIC, X inactivation center. It's a region present in X chromosome. So both the X chromosomes would have this region. Now what happens is uh, this XIC or this X inactivation center has a gene that codes for a specific transcript or RNA that is called XIST, ZIST. It is called ZIST that stands for X inactive specific transcript. The name itself suggests that it has to do something with the inactivation. It, it plays a role in inactivating the chromosome. So the XIC region of the X chromosome, both the chromosome, both the X chromosome has a gene. It contains a gene that codes for a specific transcript or RNA called ZIST, which is X inactive specific transcript. Now, what is the role of this ZIST? Now, the interesting thing over here is only the X chromosome that is undergoing inactivation will produce ZIST. All right, because ZIST is the RNA or a transcript that is going to inactive the X chromosome. How also we are just seeing in a couple of minutes. Interesting. So, what is happening with the other X chromosome? Why XIC is not producing ZIST? Alright, so what is believed is uh, the X chromosome that has to remain active, their XIC region would be blocked by some of the blocking factors. Alright, so there will be no transcription happening over here to produce ZIST. Now, now there is something called N-1 rule okay, in the cell where the 
X chromosomes are counted. How many X chromosomes are there? From that, one would be excluded. Remaining all X chromosome would undergo inactivation. That means only you know uh, blocking factors that could be needed to block the transcription of one chromosome is produced by the cell. So it will inactivate only one XIC. So that's how the XIC region of one chromosome would be blocked. Rest all chromosome. In normal case, the remaining X chromosome, the XIC region is going to produce the ZIS transcript. All right. I hope this is not so complicated. It's very easy to understand. You have the X chromosome containing the XIC region, that is X inactivation center. Now. The X inactivation center has a gene that goes for cyst, which is needed for the inactivation of X chromosome, and that is produced by the X chromosome that has to undergo inactivation. The other X chromosome is kept active by blocking the expression of XIC by some of the blocking factors in the cell. Now, once the cyst is produced, now remember one thing: this is RNA. Okay, this is a transcript. It never undergoes translation, and we know we are talking about the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell, where only transcription occurs. So it is only the RNA form that is produced. The cyst is the transcript. So this RNA, this cyst, is going to coat this chromosome, which is undergoing inactivation. All right. See, look at here, as it is shown, it is going to coat this. X chromosome. Now, by coating this X chromosome, what it probably does is it prevents acetylation and it prevents demethylation of the chromosome of this particular chromosome. Now, here, uh, if you guys know about histone remodeling, that for a chromosome to be available for transcription to undergo transcription. It should be in decondensed form, right? It, if it is condensed, it is not available for the enzyme to bind and undergo transcription. And for decondensation, acetylation and demethylation are two important processes, right? So by coating this, it prevents the acetylation and demethylation. That means it promotes condensation. It keeps the chromosome in highly condensed or heterochromatin stage. Because of that, it is transcriptionally inactive. That's how the inactive uh, state of X chromosome is maintained, and it is because of this probable reason. It prevents the acetylation and demethylation. Histone remodeling is not happening. Decondensation is not occurring, because of which it remains in condensed stage. It is highly compact structure, which is not available for transcription. So it is inactive. That's how X chromosome is kept inactive. And as I said, there is n minus one rule. That means only one chromosome, X chromosome, would be active. All other X chromosome, generally, in normal cases, only one. But in rare cases, if there is three X chromosome in a female, you will find two bar bodies in the nucleus. If there is, say, for example, Klinefelter syndrome, XXY male, you would find. One bar body in the nucleus. Now, here I want to just uh, briefly talk about this bar body. So, if you guys have noticed or observed the bar body under the microscope, it is always found towards the nuclear envelope. It is very close to nuclear envelope, towards the edge of the nucleus. Now, the reason behind this is uh, chromosome distribution in nucleus. If you guys are aware of it, is not a random process. It's a very specific process. Uh, the distribution of chromosome. And generally, the chromosomes that are transcriptionally inactive would be found towards the uh, your near the nuclear envelope. Whereas the transcriptionally active chromosome, once they are you know transcriptionally active, you will find it in the center of the towards the center of the nucleus, or I would say in the nucleolus. The reason is this is the transcriptionally active area, very very much active for transcription, and the uh, Near the nuclear envelope or the edge of the nucleus is the area where the transcription level is very low. So bar body is inactive, so it is found or it is located towards the nuclear envelope. Just for the information, I thought I would share this. So that's all. This is how X chromosome gets inactivated. This is the mechanism. Main thing you need to remember is XIC and this role of XIC and role of this. 
So that's all for now. I hope this video was helpful. Do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and I'll see you next time. Until then keep learning.